Our panel for this week, Gloria Allred, Tommy Laren, back now. They're together for the first time uh, and clearly matching. Uh, I think you guys <laughs> called each other in advance, right? As part of I your... definitely have Gloria's number. Hit, we coordinated this. I think you hit her up in the DMs. <laughs> yeah, the DMs. Um, yes. For sure. All right. Uh, let's, let's begin, though, with a pretty serious topic. Mm -hmm. Gloria, are you concerned about the unintended consequences uh, when it comes to this Iran action? Yes, Alex. Actually, I'm concerned about both the intended and unintended consequences and also the motive for doing it. Uh, I have a lot of questions, of course, with the more than 10,000 lies that President Trump is documented to have told. Uh, one has to wonder, what's the truth here? What's the reason? Is he, for example, trying to change the narrative from the impeachment to a war? I hope not, because he's got to respect our members of the armed services and not put their lives at risk, especially if, it, if the reason is not the true reason for doing so. Tommy? If I'm hearing this correctly, you'd say that we're trying to distract from an impeachment. I think quite the opposite. President Trump hopes that we talk about impeachment because it's only doing great things for his fundraising and for his reelection effort. But we talk about this. I, you and I can actually probably agree on something is that I don't like endless wars either. I think that Trump was right to pull troops out of Syria. I think that that was the correct move. But here we are put in a situation where it was we were clearly being the victims of aggression and Iran's been getting more and more and more aggressive as a president of the United States, unlike President Obama. Obama, instead of sending a plane full of cash, we're going to say this doesn't cut it. The buck stops here. So again, I think that it is an incredibly volatile time, but I think this president acted responsibly. And I think that if President Obama had done this, I think the left would be applauding it. Well, obviously, you believe in just about anything that comes out of President Trump's mouth. You do not believe in the thousands of lies that he has told that have been documented. Uh, obviously, the truth is not is really a casualty where it comes to Trump. And, but you don't agree with that. If he says jump, you say how high. That is what I'm concerned about. This is this is putting us on the brink of war. If in fact it is not in, an act of war, which many people say it is. And why didn't he? consult with congressional leaders in the Democratic Party. Why do only Republicans know about this when the lives of both Democrats and Republicans are going to be put at risk if we have to go to war? And again, I, I don't think that this was an action that he took lightly. I think when our embassy is How being would threatened. You, know that? you don't know that. Well, I know that he respects our military, and I know that oh. he has been calculated. He hasn't put us in endless wars. He campaigned on getting us out of endless wars. I don't think this president wants to go to war. But unlike President Obama and Hillary Clinton, he's not going to leave our personnel over there being attacked, having people t chant death to America. You can't reason with people that are chanting death to America and want to wipe the United States and Israel and a number of other places off the face of the earth. He you respects our military so much that he tried to and did get out of serving in the military. So please, but don't again, tell me about how much well, he respects the military. What, what, I think what, the what, military would disagree with you there. Actually, well, many of them are big proponents what, of this president. One, one of the comments getting a lot of attention on social media was something that Rose McGowan uh, said. Let's put this up. She said that uh, we're being held hostage by a terrorist regime. We do not know how to escape. Please do not kill us. That's what she was saying to the people of Iran. Uh, Tommy responding there. What would you make of that, that comment? It's amazing that President Trump, by his actions, has made Democrats defend Iran, a murderous regime and a regime that's been oppressive not only to women but to, to their own people. But again, the Democrats are coming out of the woodwork to defend Iran now. And that tweet, I don't care if you like President Trump, you hate President Trump, it doesn't matter. When you're defending a nation like Iran, there's a serious problem here. That is Trump derangement syndrome at its finest. Okay, well, uh, obviously she's bought into the major talking points of the Republican Party that uh, Senator McConnell talked about this morning uh, with the so-called Trump derangement. Well, maybe he is deranged. We'll have to wait and see. But in are, any are event, it's not about that. It's not about the name calling. It's about, is this going to be war? I questioned whether we should be going to war and what were the real reasons uh, that we were going to war in Iraq in 2001. It turned out that the reasons given then were actual lies and people lost their lives. American soldiers and military lost their lives because of the lies that were told by the top cabinet officials. And now here we are again. We need to question and not just walk blindly into that dark night. Right. Tommy. I do have a question for Gloria, though, because I know that you mentioned your shero is Hillary Clinton. She did a very interesting thing in Libya with Gaddafi. I'm wondering if you support that, because there are, are a few people that are as war hawkish as Hillary Clinton and others within the Democratic Party. And I'm wondering if you would support a President Hillary if she'd made the same move. She did a very similar action in Libya. 
what, declared war? Uh, no, no, she, she took didn't. out a major, a major no, leader. No, she didn't. You know what? Regime changed Hillary war. Clinton subjected herself to hours and hours, I think 11 or 12 hours of congressional questioning, and they found nothing wrong Except for the, that she the death did. Of Americans. Unfortunately, it, President Trump will not subject himself to questioning either by the United States Congress, the House of Representatives, and the impeachment hearing, which he, he was invited to attend and participate in and declined. And now I doubt that he will appear before the United States and, Senate either. And, and technically, it was the people of Libya that killed uh, Gaddafi, not a, a U.S. drone strike, although clearly the conditions that the U.S. created the conditions changed, that the, were created changed the on situation Hillary Clinton's on the ground. Watch. Uh, let, let's talk about impeachment, though. You, you brought up uh, the issue of impeachment. Um, do you think that Nancy Pelosi should submit the articles to the Senate? I, I think she will at some point. The only question is when. We're not interested in a sham trial. We're not interested where there are no rules that make any sense, where there is no evidence that is presented, where no witnesses are presented. The question is, why is President Trump stonewalling? If, you know, if his chief of staff, if others who had evidence, who were on that phone call uh, about Ukraine and withholding aid unless they announced an investigation into Joe Biden in an yeah. attempt to smear him, why does he not allow them to testify? If it was going to be good for him, I'm sure he'd put them right out there. And, and Tommy, of course, Bill Clinton, there were no witnesses in that trial back in 1998. But when we're talking about a sham trial, I think it's very interesting because this whole thing has been a sham. And again, President Trump has said numerous times, read the transcripts, decide for yourself. And then if you want to go into an election year and you decide that President Trump did something you're uncomfortable with, that's fine. But, but couldn't he do more than read the transcripts? I mean, can't we actually talk to the people that were in on the call? That's what they're asking and for. If, and if this goes, if Nancy would send it over, then I look forward to Hunter Biden. I look forward to Joe Biden having to take so the if, stand. So if, I, if I, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden testify, you think Mick Mulvaney and, and uh, Pompeo should testify as well? I think that would be fair, but I don't think you're ever going to see a Joe or Hunter uh, because even being so much as questioned about a very real quid pro quo, by the way, uh, he calls an Iowa voter fat at even the, the mere mention of it. So. You know, you, you, you are distracted by those Republican talking points because... Joe Biden and Hunter Biden have nothing to do with that phone call that President Trump made to the president of About Ukraine. About corruption where because he, of Burisma no, and Joe was, and Hunter was, Biden. Okay, excuse me. I didn't, I yeah. didn't interrupt you. Yeah. Ukraine, the phone yeah. call where he withheld millions of taxpayer dollars that were authorized by Congress that were supposed to go to Ukraine, who was at war with Russia, yeah. withheld them unless and until he did them a favor, meaning announce an investigation into Trump's political opponent, Joe Biden. That's a dirty trick. That's a smear. It's, an, it's a violation of the impoundment clause and the impoundment law. He had no right to do it, yeah. and now he's being called to account. Last word real quickly, Tommy. I can't wait for 2020 because this is only going to serve us well. This president is winning for the American people. The Democrats are very upset by that, so I look forward to them watching them find their safe Who's spaces. Who's the strongest Democratic nominee for 2020? The strongest Democratic nominee, uh, their nominee is going to be Joe Biden. That's going to be hours of endless entertainment for me. What her, do you think? Her crystal ball, I guess she thinks is working. Mine is not working, but my choice is going to be ABT, anybody but Trump. <laughs> So we got ABT, anyway, but Trump and TDS, Trump derangement syndrome in the same uh, segment there. Uh, well, coming up next, we're going to try something a little different. Have each of them ask a question of each other, which is kind of cool. What would be the one question you have for each other when we come back? And maybe some dancing. Who knows? Welcome back to The Issue Is. Last segment, Tommy, Laren, Gloria, all read together. We're trying something different, giving each of you an opportunity to ask one question of the other person. Tommy, let's start with you. Your question for Gloria. Sure. I have a lot of questions, but because I am sitting across from a legend, and I do mean that even though we disagree on almost everything. You mean... You mean Alex? Yeah. <laughs> Alex is a legend, too. Okay. But, you know, you're a legend, and obviously you. I grew up knowing who you were and following your work. So my question would be, from a nonpartisan standpoint, what is your advice to a young woman who's obviously in a, in a public field, in a public career, in dealing with it all? Uh, be prepared with the facts. Then uh, reach your opinion. Be confident in what you say, as you are. And just be strong. And that's what you are. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate you. that. And Gloria, your question for okay. Tommy. All right, Tommy. Uh, 
of the thousands of documented lies that Trump has told, <laughs> are there any that bother you? And if so, which ones? You know, I don't, of the thousands of documented lies, I think included in there are how many scoops of ice cream and other things that are nonsensical like that. But, you know, there are things that this president has done that I'm not in favor of, and I'm pretty vocal about it when that happens. However, I do think he's doing great things for this country. So, uh, Which lies? Are, do you believe everything he's ever said, or any of them lies? Well, I think sometimes he exaggerates the crowd size uh, at an inauguration here and there. And that's but, it? Is that the only lie? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be curious to know which lie you're referring to. Well, I'm referring to any. Open-ended question. Any of the thousands of documented lies, is the crowd size the only one that you can point out that you don't be that you believe Before that you he, didn't point one out told? to me. So I don't have to. I'm out, the I'll one who you. asked you the question. Yeah, I still it, don't have the answer. Apparently, this just became a cross-examination of Gloria Allred. <laughs> well, you both uh, will agree on one issue, uh, that of choice. Uh, you, uh, Tommy's been very um, vocal about her support for being pro-choice, and uh, so I think you both can find some agreement on I'm that, on that issue as that. well. Yeah. There we go. Thank There's you. always something, right? There's yes. always one, one thing that links everybody together. And that's a very big issue. I know. It especially is. Uh, this year. 2020, yeah. and especially if President Trump, God forbid, has the opportunity to appoint anyone else to the United States Supreme Court to any vacancy. Well, let's end with some fun. Um, Gloria, there's a great documentary about Gloria if you want to know more about her story, including a lot more about the issue of choice. It's called Seeing All Red. And in the credits of that film, we see Gloria dancing with drag queens dressed as Gloria in the <laughs> West Hollywood uh, gay rights uh, parade, <laughs> including <laughs> some Supreme Court justices. She goes down the street with her song, right. Gloria. Uh, and so this has got to be a lot of fun, right? It is. I've and, been in it every year for more than 40 years. Wow. And so I thought you're here. Tommy's already asking to learn from you. OK. Can you teach us your move? Can we go out to your move? Let's do All it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Show us, Gloria. Here we go. What is it? It's, it's a lot of arm. There we go. Okay. There it is. <laughs> well, that's something you won't get on any other show. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. Gloria, come on. Here we go. There we go, Tommy. All right. That, that's it. See you next week. I like the moves, though. <laughs>